let's see. What else could... I mean, there, again, like, we've been focusing on, like, Dirian having to play better, but, I mean, he, he did get close last time, so it's not like he has to do a whole lot different. He just needs to make sure you can close out the set if it gets to 2-2 two, two again. Yeah. Needs to get that little edge and get that, that finish in. Alright, and we're into game one. So, let's see how this will go. It is Kat Setsu versus Dirian's Ratbo. And I'm a bit surprised because after all that I said about Ratbo being like the best against the Mordar that Kat had, Dirian decides to bring this out right away. So it's a bit vulnerable now because it can lose to... If it loses, he's not going to have it available if he needs it for the, against the Mordar, but maybe he has a different plan for the Mordar or just... Or he's just not worried about maybe it. Maybe he's just general. not planning on losing. Yeah, I guess his, he picked option C against the Mordar, which is just play better. So yeah. there we go. He went with play better, and he's uh, he's not gonna worry about losing here. He's try to take a nice win and be ready. All right. Well, uh, looks like both players just sort of bridge controlling, not really putting a whole lot of pressure on each other. At the moment, Cat did play a cleaver bot lane, so Darian has to have something to deal with that, but. He's Ratbo, right? He can just play any minion and the Scrat would tank. Yeah. I even think what he just did there was a mistake. He should have uh, played the Blue Golem. Oh, the Blue Golem at Taunt though, right? So that Yeah, it's it's the Rock Rival. Yeah. And now this uh, frenzied living statue is coming in. Girin does have the Curse Bearer, of course, to help with that. Oh, the Shock Rock missed the... Uh, okay. Living Statue only got two hits in, that's not too bad. And now, Dirian's still, like, about equal on experience and now has a discounted uh, blue golem for the rest of the game. So, good deal yeah, for him. that's gotta feel good. Alright, so... Now it's... Balls and Cat's Court, he needs to try and make sure he stays in this game here. Ooh, nice Shock Rock from Dirian, making sure that Zhao Long can defeat the Setsu in top lane. Yeah. So he puts an end to that threat. Possibly gives Dirian opening to take the bridges a little bit easier now. Maybe back up this aimbot in the, bo in the bottom lane to make a bit more of an aggressive push. Oh, this blue golem will do. That's pretty hard to deal with. Because Cat's going to jump on it with Setsu, but the Setsu's not going to target that aimbot. It's going to go to the Taunty Golem. Yeah. And the Daka comes out in time to make sure he doesn't take... Yeah, great use of the Daka. Face, which is really good. kill a Cleaver for free? Do so. It's really good. Yeah, really good use of the Daka. Okay, this, this that dragon is a, that's a, you're it's not, not quite moonwalk, like it's moon flying. It's a moon flying. <laughs> that's not how wings well. work, Dragon Well, please. Um not with that attitude. Clearly they work out for him. Did you see that? <laughs> Man's got style. Well he did end up dying, so he must have done something wrong. No. The same. Yeah, user error, you know? <laughs> It's a uh, man. This discounted blue golem is really nice for Dirian. Yeah, Cat's doing a good job of using his spells to deal with the surrounding minions. Oh, it blocks the Daka with a very well-timed Morgul. So this Curse Bear is going to deal a lot of damage with the uh, this curse, just sapping away of its life. Yeah, I think Percentage. overall that went pretty well for Dirian, though. Yeah, I mean. He was on the aggressive long enough that he held the bridges for a while, but Kat's doing a really good job of just taking the bridges back immediately whenever he has the opportunity to. And, like, as good as the blue golem is on paper, like, six mana for a taunt blue golem sounds really, really good, Kat has been handling it repeatedly extremely well. I mean, really, this is the, the thing that Dirian needs, is the aimbot 
behind the blue golem. Last time it ran ahead of the blue golem, it just died to Setsu's attacks. So yeah. now in this case, um, oh, the blue golem did go die, go down, and same, same did the aimbot, but Cat did have to expend a lot of resources in order to do that, so Dirian ends up at the bottom bridge anyway. At least, no, Nether Bat. Nether Bat, why are you so good for one mana? Nether Bat, really the peak one mana card now, I think, after the, the recent. Yep, I, I actually agree. I think. If you had if you had to say like rush which one mana card do you think is the best? Nether Bat. Yeah, I I'm in agreement. I think a lot of players would probably agree at this point. Um after the recent changes they have put through. Alright. Anyways. Cause yeah, but look at so, this bat. It's gonna easily kill those two scraps and take top bridge. Yeah. It's so good. Okay. And it, it, it also wins out the trade against uh, Illusionary Cleaver now, so... Okay, back to the game. Since uh, Cat is getting Cat a bit of momentum back, uh, Gearing did very well uh, dealing with that Setsu with the stun laser. Actually managed to, like, stun her instead of Shock Rock and kill her before she could do anything. But... I mean, he's the blue golem seem to be getting worse and worse as the game goes on, because it's hard for them to deal with all this like range spam that Cat is bringing and like the Setsu stun lasers. Although Cat should have played Setsu somewhere else there, not where the blue golem could immediately smack her. Yeah. Yeah. Alright, here's Setsu again. Cat is trying to play spells in order to spin her laser around and shoot everything, but like the, the problem with Setsu in this matchup is Dirian just like passively gets a bunch of stra scratch as little targets that Setsu can't can't help but want to shoot them all down, even if they can't, if he wants them like it's hard to control where Cat is gonna shoot with his Setsu. Yeah. All these little targets running around. Uh, but Dirian... Still a really close match here, XP-wise. Oh, Dirian, I think, misplayed the golem a bit. I need, he needed to play it, like, to make sure that Setsu aims away from the aimbot so he doesn't just, like, kill the aimbot with uh, the splash laser that Cat has now. Yeah. So now Dirian's down an aimbot, which he really needed to keep control of this bottom bridge without having to spend more resources to do it. So now he's got another aimbot. Let's see if he can protect this one. Uh, doesn't need to. Setsu went top. Oh, he need... Oh, Dirian played a blue golem, and now it's just getting stunned repeatedly and can't actually attack back. It gets stunned again, just Cat keeps playing spells, and this, if this blue golem goes down without doing anything, it, it basically did nothing. Yeah. Like, and this is one of the cases where, like, sure, your blue golem is discounted, but even a six mana blue golem can be a waste of mana if you don't protect it in situations like that and now yeah like... he kind of just used it to to trade the blue golem for like the six mana for his hp from the setsu push right uh but i mean what did he gain from that right cat just hit mana frenzy now and dirian's still taking on so much damage here just kind of yeah it, it ended I mean, up doing nothing i mean it, it was a six mana like... do nothing Setsu perma stun. Oops, Dirian tried to use Daka, but if you get stunned while using Daka, you're gonna cancel. So, um, and he does uh, help Setsu, is. but yeah, enough damage was still there to end up killing him. Man, really, really interesting game though. Really nice to see. Overall, just a couple, couple mistakes really build up. I mean, it sort of highlights. Like, really, the biggest weakness of Rock Rivals is not that it has the living statue they have to deal with. It's, like, actually winning once you have the six-mana blue golem, because, like, even then, like, if the opponent has enough stuff in order to deal with blue golems, then a six-mana blue golem isn't even that good. And, I mean, there wasn't really a whole lot else that Dirian had in order to keep his aggression going and maintain the bridges for a long time yeah
Uh, yeah, so now Dirian has to decide what he is going to do. Now that his rat bow is gone, he has Volko or Setsu. And that might, like, put Cat as a bit of an advantage now because Cat basically just has to make sure he's good against aggressive decks because that's what Volko and Setsu both like to do. Yeah. Wasting no time as we get into the next game. Alright, so... Tyrion is going to play Bridge Buddies right away. Not only taking both bridges, but setting Setsu's ammo at 1. So, pretty good play there. And now Dirion playing a bit more of a spammy deck, trying to copy what Cat's doing and maybe do a little do it a little bit better. Maybe this uh this curse bear is probably not as good in this matchup now, because Dirion might not have any big stuff. Yeah, I don't think the curse bear is gonna be as strong here. More tech. Especially seeing what Dirion's brought. Alright. Dirian hit perk one first, Cat followed soon after. Just a, <laughs> one of those starts, you know, it takes a little bit of time to ramp up. And the cleaver comes out to deal with this Setsu. One quick cleave. Yep, yeah, although Cat's doing very well dealing with this cleaver now. He's, he's stunned it. He's had it attack multiple small minions, swarmers, yeah. and an illusory cleaver. Really handled that cleaver well. Kind of showcases a little bit too uh, why cleaver is such a defensive card, uh, not really an aggro card. Uh, he used it really quickly to deal with the Setsu, and it, it handled it, you know, right away. And then as soon as it was past that middle point, it kind of loses its value because it allows your opponent to play around it if they... I mean, I, it, I'd say if they know what they're doing, but it's not the hardest card to play around either, you know? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a card that, like, gets better and better the more you support it. Yeah. Um, because, like... The bigger you the bigger you push, you make alongside the cleaver. The harder it is to just like play small stuff and have them actually survive to take the cleaver aggro. You see, even there, even in this case with minimal support, Dirian didn't have enough to stop cleaver from hitting him in the face. Yeah, yeah, he uh, opted for the stint to help deal with Setsu, take the bridge after, and take the cleaver hit to the face. Makes sense. So now this is looking a lot different from the last Setsu mirror these these guys play. Now Cat is in the driver's seat here. With both a uh, experience lead and health lead. Yeah. And it might be just like uh <laughs> tournament fatigue setting in for Dirian. These guys have both played for uh quite some time now like, it's been yeah, more than five hours for both of them maybe well i don't know if it's five hours for both because they both their first matches might have been delayed or something but anyways uh yeah i mean it, it's been it's been quite a while though and you know the longer you is, play my point is typically that affects cat less than other players he's just uh, that's he's because cats are robot. yeah robots, I've noticed that about robots don't he, get fatigued he he just plays solidly all the way through the entire tournament. Just as after the tournament, then he's fatigued, and then it's like sets in all at once. So, <laughs> and the Setsu jump from Cat here is to take this bottom bridge and just kind of put a little more pressure. Walk through here, getting down to 1300 life. Uh, Cat's definitely in the driver's seat here. He's 8 XP away from perk three, which really lets him ramp it up. And another cleaver. It hits his side of the field and is just dealt with really easily the Morgrel. Yeah. Foiled by Morgrel. But still, uh, cats. They're 
maybe struggling a little bit to deal with the stragglers. Okay, finally gets rid of all of them. Uh, we've got an illusion off in bot lane. And now Cat is going to take to the field with his Setsu and immediately lose it to the Cleaver. That's exactly what Dewey needed to stay in this game. It could have been really bad had Cat been able to make his way into Durian's territory and have it fire off the stun laser repeatedly. Yeah. And, man, this is definitely looking like it's Cat's game. Durian's not of it yet. Can Durian guess where, where Setsu's heading again? Okay, he didn't really guess, he just waited until he saw. Yeah, he, so he takes, gonna take a little does bit take of damage. a little damage, but... And Cat's hand is getting a bit awkward here. It's, it's full of spells, which he doesn't really want to play because Durian has this Zhao Long on the field. Okay, he's playing spells anyway now. He just decides, I have to, because this... Like, I have to deal with this Zhao Long some other way. Yeah, it was a... important skill playing against Zhao Long is knowing when you want to... Uh, hold your spells in order to avoid activating it, but also when to just ignore the fact that it exists and play spells anyway, because it's important. Yeah. He and might Kat's, have gone too far in that Kat's direction, really been though, pushed on the defensive here. Are, He's yeah, doing a lot of damage to him. Constantly having Ooh. to make the defensive that choices that here. Fell a little bit too early. Okay, now he's doing a good job stunlocking this cleaver down. Unfortunately, he loses his setsu to Cat's setsu. And Cat's really under pressure. Cat's taking a lot of damage because he ended up having to play like the pressure from Durian was really strong, and Cat had to play super defensive yeah. for a long time. The shock rock came out there wow. to stun, I believe, okay, right as it so... was played. Yes, Cat that is really good. Jump onto Durian's side of the field and play to shock rock where this the Setsu is going to land, just in case Durian played a cleaver there, and Durian did! There was and a... the shock rock was enough to keep the cleaver stunned repeatedly. Yeah, it, it gets the stun started. That's a really good play from Cat. I mean, that's high quality. That's like number one in the world player quality to play. <laughs> yeah. Respect Cat. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, even with that nice play, with that big play there, he is still the one that's under pressure right now. I mean, he still has a bit of triple cast. He was gone. He just needs to survive. Oh, it's back. Okay, never mind. Durian doing a lot more damage. I don't think Cat was expecting that. He's really. Oh my gosh, he's getting really close now. Um, Jalong does it. Him. Durian takes the game here from Cat, actually. Really well wow. played from, from Durian, actually. It seems like one little lapse in focus with Cat. Like, Cat's like. Breathe a sigh of relief too early. Says, "Okay, I've done the set two. I can relax a little bit." And then suddenly the set two just came back immediately because Durian already had the set to jump back in his hand, and Cat just reacted a little bit too slowly, and it just Durian eked out just enough damage to win. So yeah, very very well played from Durian there. So now series is tied one one. Um, what's going on here? No, I think we're good. Yeah, we're good right now. Someone the server had set had the a... like grand finals win as cat, and the cat had already. Okay, never mind. It doesn't matter. We're going into the game three, um, where a cat has to now pick a different master. He needs to go to Volko or Mordar. Um. If we're sort of following the same line as last time, he'll switch. Like, Cat might switch to Volko and win, and then Durian switches to his Volko and wins against Cat's Volko. We'll see if the. If the. We have basically an exact repeat of the last match. We'll have to see. Cat might try to switch it up, just going to Mordar early. Uh, what do you think? You think he should go to Mordar or Volko? Uh, honestly, I I think... Man, it's really hard to say. Because I feel like Dirian, with this Setsu, has the tools to control Mordar. So probably the Volko, but also there's... 
there's interesting cards in there, man. I don't know, a hundred percent, honestly. Uh, when it's, I I find there are some matchups where I can see a clear path, and I I know it's pretty hard favored, or I feel like it is anyway. You know, like certain players, certain decks, it'll feel mm -hmm. pretty hard favored. I don't feel like this is one of those situations where Cat has a distinct advantage with Mordar or Volko. Like I don't I don't think there's a mind to uh, the other. That, that I think maybe that's just I think Gary has the tools for the purposes. I don't know if you're picking up on your end or my end. <laughs> Who's the robot? Which cat to decide which <laughs> is the robot? <laughs> Uh, or you go with the robot, though. Well, that's kind of an issue. Um, anyway, see, I'm getting the ad paying to this right now, so it's looking good. Okay, well, assuming Twitch can hear us. They... Assuming everything can hear now? us, the game's still going. Okay, I can hear you. I believe, uh, like... yeah, it looks like one of the admins for the server has switched it to a different one. Uh, oh. Which should resolve that issue for the second time. Well, that's good. Um, anyways. Okay. As we're tr I was trying to say, I think I if I were a cat, I'd be more comfortable going to the Volko. Just because, like I said, against the Mordar, you you want to make sure that you control the reses, not the opponents. And with Setsu jumping everywhere, and with like Daggerfall and Shockrock, that can be hard to achieve against that Setsu deck. You'll, you'll get a lot of uh, suboptimal reses, I feel, if you switch to the Mordar right away. And Cat agrees with me, takes the Volko. Yeah. And we'll have to see how this goes. Now, if Therian was really heads up play here, he might have expected this and tried to put as much flying into his deck as possible. So, that would include keeping the Zhao Long. He does have the Zhao Long. There's, there's something else in Therian's deck. I don't want to call it out yet. I maybe we'll get it as a surprise. Oh. I, I I can I narrow it down to two there's, cards. Yeah, there's there's certainly there's only two cards you'd say that about. I think I I feel like you probably know exactly the one specific card that I would mention. Um, okay. He does well, have that, that good. Down to one, then. Yeah, he does have good it's flying. Red golem, right? It is red golem, correct? <laughs> okay. Yeah. We have the the Dirian Setsu with red golem. Um. Now, he does have good I... flying cards. He has the Xiaolong and the Dragon Well. Uh, good against Volko. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think that having a huge tank like that and having a bunch of flying makes a very, very good combination because there are very good few units that are good against both. Yeah. So, um, Dirian does have to find a way to get his health below half, but not so far that he's in danger of dying. And that's kind of a trick, because he... I mean, if he has Blood Imps, he certainly hasn't played them yet, so... We'll have to see. One thing that Dirian might be able to do is just sort of... surreptitiously... ignore the bottom bridge at some times, just so that Cat gets some quote-unquote free firebolt damage in and maybe that'll be enough to get doing below half hp so that might be yeah. a strategy employs here anyways um let's we'll see how this goes right now um yeah, be interesting. I'm I'm excited. I think this is gonna as the game you know progresses as we get a little bit further in. I'm really interested to see how it goes. It looks like at the so, moment, like Durian is still decently 
Um, staying equal in experience, just about. Yeah, he's, he's maintaining this XP with, with Cat, uh, keeping it really even. Which is good. And he is taking a bit of damage, but uh, yeah. I mean, with the red golem in his list, it's not entirely a bad thing. There is like uh, there is that concern that he takes too much damage, and then Volko is good at finishing people off, but... I mean, I think in this game in particular, I pretty much think it is just straight up a good thing. Yeah, I, I think there's not think really much as... that Cat has in order to stop the Red Golem. I mean, the, his best chances are the Flightless Dragons and the Dragon Whelp to try to overwhelm it with, with a bunch of damage all at once. But I, I think it's just a matter of controlling the damage you take, which Dirian is really good at, right? Like, he's very good at hitting that, that 1500 mark to get his Red Golem activated and then not taking bad damage after that. Um, yeah, and that's I mean, that's what really matters. If he takes bad damage, it, it could be obviously bad. You know, it could open the door for Cat, but I don't I don't see it happening. 175 health to go for Dirian. So I mean, it could be as simple as just like having a small minion that Dirian plays and Cat just I mean just that Cat plays and then Dirian ignores it and has Setsu jump away so he doesn't kill it. But. So far, it isn't happening. He doesn't want to take these flightless dragons to the face, that's for sure. He wants to deal with those. Those are a bit too damaging. Maybe he'll just take a few hits off of them. Like, yeah, just use the... Uh, and there it okay. is. So yeah, There's he is the in activation. Range. I think he did definitely take a bit more damage than he wanted to, but... Yeah, now the it's... red golem's out, and now Cat's I still think it's saying, within wait a minute, reason. whoa. Yeah, I, I think he took more than he intended, but I don't think it's like outside of reason. I think 1100 is okay considering. Yeah, and as long as Durian keeps playing the Red Golem's bottom lane, it's gonna be really hard for Cat to uh, keep the bottom bridge is... so he can firebolt him down. Although, this is exactly what I was talking about with the, the Flightless Dragons, and Cat just hit perk 3, meaning those Flightless Dragons do 50% more damage, just shredding that Red Golem. Yeah. And this is what Dirian really needs to avoid. He needs to really just like pour all his resources into making sure that Cat just can't like efficiently deal with the red golem like that. Like, I think if Dirian plays anything right now and it's not something that heads bot lane, that's a mistake. Like, yeah. in this situation, he really needs to just like Try to ignore top lane as much as he can. Oh, I think even, like, look, the stint in the warrior, I think that was a mistake. I think they needed to go bot lane. I think he needed to find a, a more efficient way to deal with that if stuff is in top lane. Because now this opens the door for these great rampaging flightless dragons to come in and. Yeah, the sets are. It, it, it did, it looks like it it did do a good bit of damage, but it's definitely. It's definitely it, yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, take back everything I said. That worked out really, really, really <laughs> well. I mean, I think it definitely came down to Cat's deck just, like, not really having a whole lot that can deal with the Red Golem. I mean, if Flightless Dragons was his one big thing that would work, but, like, in that yeah. case, there was just enough in the bottom lane that it wasn't enough to get enough damage That's not something in. you always see there, but that really... A bit of versatility from the Setsu there. A lot of times you see the Setsu used to push that extra bit of face damage, but Dirian used it as a more of a supporting cast there to to make sure this red golem can march in. And while you're trying to deal with this red golem Setsu, I mean, there, there's other units there still. You know, it's not it's not all of it. All right. Well, Cat is now down to his Mordar. Um, again, since this. I would like to remind everyone, since this is Grand Finals and Cat has not last a, lost a match yet, if he loses this match, the the bracket will reset and they'll do another Grand Finals match. And with like both, in which case, like both players will now be like down to the loser's bracket and that will determine yeah. the winner. Uh, if Cat does come back and win this set, then he does win the tournament outright. So only Cat has a second chance here. We'll see if he can make it happen cushion. with his Mordar. So, I'm kind of optimistic that Dirian can still win against this Mordar. It's, it's 
still like I said, I, I think he has I a think, lot of control. Yeah, I feel like this is a really good matchup. For him. Uh, like I mentioned when we were talking about the deck choice before that game, I felt like the Volko was the better option than the Mordar against Setsu because he has so many options for controlling the Mordar, and I think we'll see that come through here. That being said, you know, Mordar, Mordar can kind of pull out wins sometimes unexpected, so it'll be interesting to see if Kat can find a way to work around all of the control options that Dirian has and the manipulation for the revives the tombstone yep um and yeah we'll just have to see if cat can make that work here all right so and of course dirian might have switched up his uh probably has switched up his uh his deck again i i really really surprised if dirian still had red golem now Because I don't think you you want to go like toe to toe, big minion versus big minion. Yeah. If you're playing against a Mordar. Yeah, generally not the goal. All right. Well, Cat did have to expend a bit of mana to make sure the living statue he gave Dirian didn't do a whole lot of damage. But now, Cat is now the guy that has the discounted blue golem so we'll see if he can make that work well enough all right cat did a very good job of killing the succubus off before it could get a res and it looks like this curse bear is getting res so there's suboptimal res number one of this game <laughs> definitely I mean, it's not the worst thing in the world, but definitely Cat it's wanted It's not as nice as the Scrat Tank would have been. Yeah, I mean, you, you want you want better than that on all your reses to be a, a good Mordar here. Yeah. And you can see Cat already sort of falling behind in experience. It's hard to keep yourself afloat in the early game because Mordar's attack is notoriously low damage. And you have to expend a lot more resources in order to defend yourself. And not yeah. take like a huge amount of damage. It looks like this time, Cat refusing to play anything else. So Dirian is forced to res the Succubus. So, yeah, that's a better res for him than the Curse Bear. Although, oh no, the Succubus went ahead of the Scrat Tank and ended up dying very cheaply a second time. So that res ended up not actually being the most effective thing either. All right, uh, in the meantime, well, so Cat is still ahead in experience. I mean, Dirian has been a bit. Uh, Dirian, uh, you know? Oh, sorry. Yeah, Dirian has been a bit lazy about defending his face in order to try and get bridge try. And, oh, Cat, that might have been a bit of a misplay from Cat playing that bridge, that tombstone, when there was a dragon whelp out that could easily yeah. die and take the res. Yeah, less than ideal res. Setsu coming back now, uh, they're being dealt with on that side of the field. Bit is of a problem if it's like almost full health blue golem, it's gonna hit Dirian several times. Yeah, he's taking a lot of damage from it. And he's suddenly, he's under 1400 health now, he's taking a lot. Yeah, I mean, Dirian has been more focused on bridge control and on trying to like keep stuff under control across the board and not really worried about his face. He definitely needs to be a lot more worried now, though. He can't really afford to take too much damage. And he's already in a situation where, like, if Cat gets several good reses in a row, that can produce a push that would lose Dirian all his remaining health in one go. So... Yeah. He needs to be really, really cautious from now on. Oh, is he? Okay, he did kill okay. the blue golem before the tombstone activated, so good job from Dirian there. Um, 
bit of a problem. He needs to defend his face right here, but he also wants to kill this curse bearer first. Shock rocks the okay. tombstone. He does not shock rest. rock. That's a that's a good opportunity to do that there. Um, oh, I don't like him killing this curse bearer off before the tombstones activate though. That was a good opportunity to sort of waste a res, and he sort of lost it. Now he's gonna okay, he's gonna res the wealth instead. So never yeah. mind. He was in an out. okay spot because of the tombstone on the bottom side being so low in HP. It was timing out pretty quickly. Yeah. It worked out in his favor pretty good. And there. Durian has hit perk 3 now, which is going to help a lot against these dangerous pushes here. You can see, uh, ooh, uh, unfortunately Shock Rock did not really help in that situation. And now there's a Frenzy Succubus incoming. All right, so, I mean, definitely anyone's game right now. I, I think Dirian. Yeah, I don't think Dirian's out of this. If he can play as a stun laser correctly and sort of maintain control over what's hitting him and what he reses, I think he's gonna do pretty well here. Cat needs, yeah, Cat smartly protects his Curse Bear top lane, so that's not the res. Looks like it's a Succubus. Yep. Yeah, and that's that's not gonna feel bad. Succubus is a pretty solid res, and then on top of that with the perk three with I mean the Cat three. hasn't even been getting that good of reses and look already like Deeran's under a huge amount of pressure here. Two blue golems and a frenzy succubus. This might be it right here. Yeah, this push could definitely be it. Deering needs to, okay, so he has another spell. He needs a, another spell in order to keep these blue golems stunned. He has. There he goes again. One more Good. spell coming out. And now, like, he needs another one, but I don't think he has one. Yeah, he's a little bit of mana away from another one, and he's just getting these smacked in the face. These things are just so right tanky, here. he doesn't have enough spells in order to chain stun them long enough. And while he's expending so much of his mana here and, and cycling as hard as he can for these spells to stop this push, there's another push coming in already. There's another golem out here. There's a scrap tank, a succubus. And yeah, I mean, he managed to hold off the last one, but this is going to be it. This curse bearer is going to finish him. Yeah, frenzy curse bearer takes it. So, yeah, just too much pressure. And I think... Uh... I mean, just not really a whole lot that Deering had to effectively deal with the blue golems, despite, like, besides just, like, the stun laser, but proving not to be just not quite enough. So now we are tied two to two, and Deerian is down to his final deck, which is the Volko. So... It's make or break here for him. He needs to win this game in order to stay alive in this tournament and have a, a second chance in one more match against Cat. Yeah, this is going to be the, the tournament life for Darian here. If he loses this one, Cat and will... It's... And it's going to be tough because, like, Volko's... One of Volko's biggest strengths is burn the bridges to really... Like, deal with a lot of the small or mid range minions that would go against him. And Mordar typically has a lot bigger stuff than that that will survive Burn the Bridges. So, yes, this is a tough matchup for sure. Uh, what Dirian might want to do is try to go, like, try to build his deck that's, like, so it's, like, really, really hyper aggressive and just, like, bam the marked bridge so hard and get a lot of early damage in so that his firebolts can take care of the rest yeah so we might see something like a whole different style from Dirian here if, if, if there's any time to try something different other than just like sort of controlling the game now is the time to try it I mean it's hard to say that when you're like in your in the last game that if you lose you're in second and uh don't get the win but like this i think <laughs> i'm not sure how to say it i don't know i think the safe play is the wrong play here that's that's all i can really say 
Yeah, and I mean, that's that's how it is sometimes, right? Sometimes the safest option isn't the right option. Sometimes you have to, to do something unexpected. You have to, to take the road less traveled to really bring out a win against the someone like Kat. Uh, Kat, the player that he is, the, the person who's played this game for, for so long at such a high level, if you play by the book, I mean, Cat, Cat owns the book. You know, it's it's Cat's book. Like when it comes <laughs> to playing by the book, there's arguably nobody. I mean, at this exact moment, I would say there is nobody better than playing the game by the book than Cat. Uh, so I don't think it's the the way to win against him per se. Uh, at least consistently, I, I agree with you. I think doing something unexpected, doing something different, is the trick. You know, something that'll throw him off his game a little bit. Something unexpected. All right, well, let's see if just how unexpected he can get here. We'll have to see. He's already starting out with a lot of stuff on the board right away. And um, looks like Cat is going to deal with it fairly effectively. Uh, we'll see if Dirian maybe has an opportunity to do, try and back up this living statue. Yeah, that shock rock is pretty good there. It looks like, yeah, the first golem goes down. I mean, the previous time that Cat had played the rock rivals, it went the other way. The, the blue golem won, and then the living statue wasn't able to get any damage here. Here, like, got two quick hits in, as well as a big uh, experience lead for Dirian. So this is already, like, pretty optimal start. He just needs to make sure that he can get as many fireballs as he can, try and keep Cat's experience to a minimum. Yeah. But oh, the, the big problem here is it's going to be hard to stay aggressive against this blue golem. And I mean, as much as I, I questioned how effective, like, even a six mana golem could be, it is still going to be really effective on defense, always. What's not effective is a nether bat res, though. That's a bit yeah. of an oops from Cat. That is less than ideal. All right, Cat is just gonna take a bit of damage here as Mordar slowly stomps away <laughs> at this Shaolong. It's a bit of an issue yeah. with and a bit Mordar more damage. In the early game. But Cat's doing a good job of directing most of his forces top lane, so he's got his very powerful push up there. The the. Fire Imp and Tank is a very, very good combo. Deering already has Burn the Bridges, though. Take out that Fire Imp, so... Deering's experience advantage coming in big there. Yeah, there's the perk 2 from Cat. That second Tombstone gonna help him hopefully secure some better reses, some, some additional reses. Yeah, this is where Cat is gonna be trying to be all about the... Good fireball from Cat yeah. there, taking out those flightless yeah. and the, the rest of that cleaver. And there's a dragon whelp res for him. He's gonna hope to get this blue golem res, but this dragon whelp's gonna fly ahead and Dirian's gonna have the chance to, to kill it off before this blue golem dies. You see he's not playing anything either, he's not rushing yeah. to answer the golem because he wants to get the whelp res again. That said, taking a I lot don't of hits think in this there. matchup that Cat is too upset about having a like no, it will press against Dragon Volko. Well beat because Dirian Volko is the master that has the biggest trouble dealing with the, the Dragon Whelps. So normally not a great res, but against Volko, you're not too upset, I think. And yeah, Cat still, whenever he has a big push going with his uh, rock rifles, he always sends it top lane. As long as this blue golem is sitting on the top bridge, Dirian's really limited in his options to get aggressive yeah immediately another blue golem top lane to go with the succubus this is also a really hard combo to deal with especially since Dirian had just used burn the bridges to kill that exact same succubus yeah a good cleaver play though mm. 
I two tombstones think down. We'll see if Kieran can likely. get this nether bat res. I say it's likely yes. we're gonna see this nether bat res first. Uh, and then after that, it looks like it's gonna be the blue golem, yeah. And this is a lot of pressure coming out from Cat right now. Yeah, Durian especially is a friend in danger. Blue golem. And yeah. part of the issue is Durian's now so low on health that it really limits his options as to what gets res. It's hard to, like, avoid resing a blue golem if it's the one punching you in the face and threatening to kill yeah. you and you need to deal with it immediately. You can only afford to take so many more blue golem hits at this point, and waiting it out to, to get a better res is not necessarily going to be an option. Uh, these tombstones are out here. The timing, it's going to be a curse bear. Most likely this succubus as well. Yeah, the succubus will most likely be the res. Yeah, and but a frenzy it's succubus gonna feel, pretty well with the blue yeah. golem. Yeah, it's going to feel really fine for, for Kat here, and this is Dyrian's tournament life here. Yeah, it's danger. not looking good for Dyrian. He's just, <laughs> again, this, the, the pressure from all these reses is a bit too much. Uh, we'll see if he can get anything going with this top lane push. This frenzied cleaver is, to be sure, like a massive threat that Cat has to be mindful of. But this blue golem is going to deal with it fairly effectively. I mean, the blue golem did take a massive hit there, but that might be good because it's going to res now. Another Frenzy Blue Golem. I mean, the last time Cat got a Frenzy Blue Golem, it brought Dyrian down to the health he has now. Yeah, and at 500, so... that's... Oh, man, that is really scary. This is another really solid push coming out. This burn the bridges. I, it, Yeah, it's not going to kill the Succubus here, either. It, it doesn't... The succubus. Cat plays does the daggers. To try to protect this blue golem a little bit more or he's just gonna let it die and hopefully get it res yep it's yeah gonna he's gonna get this again. he's gonna get this res on it with with frenzy and Dyrian did take damage he is at 290 now he's even lower even lower with two blue golems coming in and this is going to be a scrap tank res for cat another really good res burn the bridges here is a little bit better for him it's going to deal with the succubus which is good but he still has to answer this yeah. blue golem in the top he just finished the one in the bottom the one in the top oh, of frenzy is closing in this is so hard to deal with we'll see if cat tries to play like fireball or something really two fireballs to Dewey's face will kill him and now cat has There's a mana, mana frenzy, frenzy as well and Dewey is so far away from mana frenzy also i think this is the yeah, point i think of no this return. is I think this is it. I think it's the the inevitable now. Cat's going to end up closing out this game and, and turning this series okay. around. And There's one see, fireball. Okay. Here comes the damage right to the face. Tyrion's out. And that is it. Cat has won yet another KPC tournament. Congratulations to him, showing why he is still pretty much the reigning champ. Just all around solid play, going toe to toe with Tyrion all the way through in two sets both in the winter semis and the grand finals so congratulations yeah. to cat and uh congratulations also to Dirian for a very very strong showing he shouldn't be i wouldn't be upset at all to get this second place if i were Dirian for sure yeah, a really close second place to cat is definitely nothing to be ashamed of